So Premier Redford will be on the air shortly. Her attempt at persuading Albertans of the progressive conservative government's plan to cope with the falling price of Alberta oil. We couldn't have asked for a better night to start our weekly political panel dissecting the week in politics. So joining us live now, our newly minted CBC News Calgary political panel. Brian Singh is a Calgary-based pollster, a strategist and longtime political watcher. And Derek Fildebrandt also watches politics closely as the communications director for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation here in Alberta. So Derek, let's start with you. What do you make of the Premier using taxpayers' money tonight to buy airtime on province-wide TV? Yeah, it's a bit hypocritical. I mean, uh, she's going on air to explain why the province is broke, yet she's uh, pointing out $50,000 in taxpayers' money to buy a slot that's probably going to amount to a political advertisement. You know, uh, this is 2013. You can do a webcast, or you can do what we've done for hundreds of years and announced this kind of thing where it belongs in the legislature. I mean, if the Premier has something newsy and important to announce, and she says it in the legis legislature or on a webcast, I'm pretty sure the networks would pick it up and it wouldn't cost 50000 taxpayer dollars to explain why we're broke. Brian, let's get you uh, to weigh in on this. What's your take on the optics of this address tonight? I think it's a weather balloon. Uh, in this day and age where every message is being tested, she wants to be able to set the table for a tough budget. So she's out there tonight going to be testing a number of ideas to test the public's appetite and how people are going to respond to it. Okay, back to you then, Derek. Uh, you know, Redford really basing a lot of uh, her election platform on things like education, spending on education. So uh, do you think it's realistic that she can convince Albertans to do that uh, tightening of their belts financially? You know, something's going to have to give from that election platform. There's a lot of very contradictory and mutually exclusive promises that she made in that election platform. She, she promised higher spending on pretty much everything, capital, health, education, social services on the one hand, but she also promised a balanced budget by next year. She promised no tax increases. Uh, she promised to maintain Alberta's uh, low tax income tax system and uh, state of no, no sales tax. So these are very mutually exclusive promises that uh, those of us who, who have done the numbers have known since before the budget was tabled that it was simply not possible to carry through on. Uh, now it's impossible to hide any more. Uh, you know, they've tabled some pretty fudged uh, quarterly fiscal updates that uh, obscure the long-term numbers, trying to focus very, very much on the short-term financial uh, and economic data. Uh, with that, with, by obscuring the long term so we wouldn't know what the, the year end would be. We're approaching the mandatory third, uh, third quarter fiscal update now and there's just no more time to try and hide. And so I think now we need, uh, is, uh, as, as was said earlier, uh, we need some honesty. We need a frank discussion about uh, the real state of, these, uh, of, of our finances and what's going to have to give. Let's talk about the possibility of raising taxes. Brian, uh, what's the situation for Redford, do you think, within her party if they do have to raise taxes? I think it could be potentially... It's, it, it, there's plus and minuses on this one. One is that this has been part of a long-term discussion. If we look at the leadership race uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Doug Griffiths had brought this up. Obviously, Doug, Doug didn't do very well in the leadership race, but he was very adamant about saying that we have to have a discussion about this. So I think that there is an appetite within the party to, ha uh, to have the dialogue on raising taxes. But ideologically, there are so many people who attach to this notion that we are a low-tax environment and that they're not going to raise taxes and to actually pursue this sort of fantasy land budget, uh, that could work against them. And there are, there's a lot of factions within the party that are looking elsewhere. And you can see what happened in the last provincial election, uh, what, uh, how uh, Albertans reacted to that, but also what some of the dynamics were within our own party. And, how many of them actually went over the Wild Rose uh, Alliance at that time. Derek, let's talk a little bit more about that, uh, stepping outside of the party and within the province. Uh, what's this going to do to the PC party as we move down the road? Well, you know, the Progressive Conservative Party is a very broad coalition of voters. It includes, you know, a lot of union support, some uh, traditional, uh, now traditional NDP and liberal support. 
uh, that uh, probably voted for the Premier based on uh, spending promises, but it does still uh, possess a faction of fiscal Conservatives who, uh, who supported Ralph Klein over the years for things like balanced budgets and low taxes, people who actually, uh, you know, Premier Klein's uh, popularity went up the more he cut, you know, the more he cut spending. And there are still a, a few people left in the Progressive Conservative Party who believe in that. Uh, I think if the party is now going to break its pledge, to not raise taxes, I think, uh, you know, and, and now it's also good, it's already announced it'll be taking on debt. I think that may drive out uh, some of the last fiscal conservatives left in the party, but it's, as I said earlier, something's going to have to give. Either she's going to have to turn her back on those higher spending promises, or she's going to have to turn her back on balanced budget and uh, no new tax promises. So uh, both financially something's going to have to give and politically as well. Well, it shall be interesting to see what happens tonight. Thank you to both of you. Brian Singh is a pollster, strategist, and longtime political watcher. And Derek Fildebrandt is the communications director with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Why do I support the Canadian Taxpayers Federation? Because families deserve a break. Because someone has to keep our politicians honest. Because honesty and hard work should be rewarded, not punished. Alone, my voice may not be heard. But together, our voices can't be ignored.